Well, I know most of you probably remember the old tour bus. It's been slightly reduced, but this is it. And I've also got this 671 here. Apparently I bought this right out of a scrap yard. A guy that I know got a hold of me and said he had a buddy that owned a scrap yard and supposedly some old boys had driven a truck in there, drove it across the scales and sold it for scrap. So they pulled this 671 out of it and he wanted to know if I wanted it. Of course I couldn't come up with any good reason why not. So he threw it in the back of his truck and here it is. Pulled the valve cover off. Rack is free. Notice there's a little rock right there and maybe a piece of an aluminum can or something wedged down in there. But other than that, nothing too catastrophic. I've got a couple of the airbox covers off here. So you're actually looking at the side of the piston right there through the intake ports in the bottom of the liner. And then over here on number six, the piston is down below the intake ports, so you're actually looking at the top of the piston right there. All right, I think we're about ready to try her out here. Got a battery on it. What the hell is that? Got the airbox covers back on. The old vice grip throttle on the rack shaft here. So this is a totally mechanical governor system. What it's gonna do is hold it in the full fuel position while it's not running, which is where it's at right now, because it thinks, hey man, you know, we're not going very fast here, we need to give her some fuel. But then as soon as it starts, it's gonna pull the fuel back and hold it over here at an idle position. At least that's what it's supposed to do, so. Full fuel's over here. That's uh, giving her the full squirt, so to speak. And then that would be no fuel over there. Got a bucket of fuel over here ready to go. Emergency shutdown flapper is open uh, in the run position. Well, obviously this thing hadn't been sitting around very long. It fired right up. It hadn't even really lost fuel prime, so. Hasn't been that long ago that it was running. So I guess what I'll do now is fire it back up, run it a little bit. This is the throttle input to the governor. So uh, I'll run her through the RPMs here from idle to full throttle. And thing's got a hell of a wobble to it down here at this damper I don't know what's going on with that but so anyway that was full throttle I was trying to get it tied with the zip tie around this fitting here and I couldn't quite get it done with one hand it's too hard to do and hold the camera but that was full throttle so what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and, and get her tied at full throttle I'll pull the valve cover off I'll put the vice grips back on the rack and I'll show you You'll, you'll have it running at full throttle and then I'll go beyond full throttle with the vice grips on the rack shaft and uh, we'll take her into the danger zone a little bit there.
think I've got all the oil washed off of me. But that should have been a pretty good demonstration on the difference between full throttle and full fuel in a no load situation on one of these old Detroits. When you go to full throttle here at the Governor, that's the same thing as throwing a brick on the gas pedal in the truck cab or whatever. All you're going to get there is max rated RPM for whatever the governor set for. So one of these, I think, typically like 21, 2200 is all they're set to turn. But then when you go up here and you push the injectors on into the full fuel position with those vice grips like I did, it's going to rev on up and go way faster than that. All right, I got some of the pipes and hoses and stuff off here that we don't need. Pulled this valve cover off and uh, a couple of these injectors were a little bit hung there in the beginning and I got them all four freed up. So you can see that the front three are free right now. What I did is rolled the engine around just a little ways. Like I said, they were all four free, but then this rear one hung up after I rolled the engine a little bit. See how it's not wanting to come out of the full fuel position when the other ones are. Or it, it may be coming back just a little bit, but not very much. So I need to try to get that one freed up and uh, keep rolling the engine around and make sure that they all stay free. And I'm going to pull this intake elbow off here so I can get this valve cover off and I'll see how many of those in there are hung up. Well, apparently you can't get this elbow off here because you don't have clearance to get that bolt out right there and I don't have the patience for it. So Just use that method of removal that's kind of my favorite all right you can see that uh, pretty much all three of these over here are hung the only one that's moving is this one they're not stuck real bad but they are a little stuck so I'll keep working those back and forth and spraying WD-40 around on there and it should free up. That's a lot better. Now I just need to roll it around a few revolutions and make sure everything stays free. I've rolled it around a few times. Everything's nice and free now. I had two or three more injectors get hung up as I was rolling it around but they all came loose so. I don't know if it would have run away or not. It might have snapped out of it. They weren't real stuck, but should be good now. maybe not round two little starter just don't sound real good all right we may have a little more juice here if I can hold my foot on this terminal and hold that down there and use this to arc across here and start it.
think we're lacking a little fuel. All right, let's try her again. We got some more ether shot in it. get no fuel round five six I don't know something like that all right Okay, I got the fuel line situation taken care of earlier. I ended up just mainlining it right into the transfer pump out of the bucket. I was going to try to save that filter, but uh, long story short, it was just going to be more trouble than it was worth. The parts store didn't have the right fitting, and I couldn't find one around here, so should be good to go now. Let's try her out. is still a runner. We'll fire it up one more time. one of these air box covers off let's fire it up and see what it looks like through this port We've got her tied full fuel. It's either gonna get hot and lock up or it's gonna fly apart.
She's hot. Real hot. Let's see what we got here. Kind of thought this damper may fly apart since it's got like a three quarter inch out around to it, but no such luck. She ain't budging, pretty sure it's locked up. Let's take her out of wide glide mode here. We'll try the starter out. It's not locked up. I'll be damned. It ain't good, but it ain't locked up. Let me pull some of these uh, airbox covers off. Cylinders are in pretty rough shape. They're scuffed pretty bad. I doubt I'll be able to make anything happen with it, but... I'll go grab the other battery and put it on here. a little it's still oiling too but it's just not going to do it there's too much cylinder damage let's see if we can give it a little encouragement maybe a lot of encouragement Smoking a little, but not gonna happen. I pulled the intake elbow off. Let's make sure the blower's turning before I take the batteries off of it. So there's a runaway 671. I was hoping being an inline six, it might fly apart, but no luck. So these old Detroits, they're uh, not much for making power and they're terrible on fuel, but one thing you gotta give to them is they're just damn near indestructible. It's pretty amazing this thing didn't lock up. This is a valve cover off that 671 we just blew up. I cleaned it up. I'll uh, stick it on eBay and put a link to the auction in the video description here in case somebody wants it. I guess that's all I've got for this one. Make sure you don't forget to dislike and unsubscribe. And I'll see you next time.